I'm Ryan Dawson. I'm a resident of Buxton and Cape Hatteras. Our islands and way of life have been stripped away from us by an activist judge and a special interest group that doesn't live on the island. Judge Boyle had no right to even entertain this case. We have a precedent of open beaches since the 1920s. Closing down beaches on an island cannot have any result other than a disaster. And yet this is precisely what has happened without any compensation to the residents of the Outer Banks. This is the last thing we needed overlapping a nationwide recession. The pretext to close the beach is insincere, unscientific, asinine, and most of all, illegal. In the past, the federal government fought tooth and nail to create recreational parks on America's seashores to be enjoyed by the public. The original intent was to connect the historical sites of the Wright Brothers Memorial and the lighthouses together by a road and to have the Park Service do what its name implies, service the park. The role of the Park Service was to provide access to the historic sites in the recreational area. They're supposed to be providing access, not limiting it. The large argument at the time wasn't framed as a debate between animals and people. The fight was between the government who wanted a public beach unspoiled for all to use and the private landowners who wanted to develop the beach for themselves. After the Florida land boom in the 1920s, the government set up research planners to create recreational lands reserved for the public's use but not open to development. Completely separate from that issue was setting aside some land to be designated as wildlife preserve for animals. The Phipps family donated large plots of land to be used as a public beach and managed by the Park Service whose initial role was building ramps and preventing erosion. How much this role has been reversed today is sickening. Cape Hatteras became one of 10 current national seashores. By definition, they are recreational parks. In fact, from 1940 to 1954, it was called the Cape Hatteras National Seashore Recreational Area. Recreational area was dropped from the title in 1954 because it was redundant because National Seashore already was defined by the Park Service itself as a recreational area. Congress had passed a bill allowing limited hunting to be added that forms of recreation on the National Seashore for Cape Hatteras on the recommendation of a letter from the Secretary of Interior, Oscar Chapman, who was the director of Yellowstone. Pea Island was set aside as a wildlife refuge and Hatteras and Ocracoke, aside from the land set aside for the villages and some tan that was adjacent to Lowell and McGrow, was to become a recreational park or national seashore. For over four generations, people have been driving to Cape Hatteras and Ocracoke from as far away as Canada to enjoy the public beaches. Beach driving, and certainly beach walking, has, never, has been allowed the entire time without conflict. You can't even reach points, portions of the beach outside the villages around Buxton without a vehicle. You cannot retroactively change a national seashore into a wildlife reserve any more than you could change a wildlife reserve into a recreational beach. If good hunting or crabbing were suddenly discovered on Pea Island, that would not mean some hunting interest group could go grab a questionable judge and start hunting on the wildlife reserve which has been as such for nearly a century. Likewise, a bird enthusiast cannot change a recreational park on an island where people already live and have their entire economy intrinsically tied to and say, no more going to the beach because I want a de facto wildlife reserve. There isn't any science to back the attacks on our civil liberties, only weak correlations of statistics which ignore numerous other variables and cherry pick papers that aren't even subject to peer review, thus making them worthless. How much long do you have, Ryan? We don't yield time. How much long do you have, Ryan? I can speed through it. Um, about two minutes. Two minutes? Let's get to it. Go ahead. Go ahead and finish. Go ahead. Thank you. As Americans, as humans, we have a right to our own beach, our heritage, and a massive part of our cultural way of life as well as, well as our economic lifeline. Same factions presenting the so-called science also issued a report claiming that there would be no economic impact from closing the beaches, which is completely laughable. Ask yourself if Central Park in New York would be closed down to the public if suddenly an albino squirrel were to be discovered living there. Driving on the beach is not hurting the piping plover. However, not driving on the beach is hurting plenty of other animals. If anything, the presence of people on the beach has been preventing natural predators from entering the area to kill birds and eat eggs. Now that Americans have been removed by the land, by the police state, the area must be patrolled constantly by the park service workers who have been gassing and shooting thousands of other animals. The fox, raccoons, geese, and crabs, and other natives have lost their beach as well as their lives. 
Furthermore, it has cost the taxpayers of the U.S. hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay the NPS to murder animals for being animals. What do they plan to do? Go on shooting possum and raccoon indefinitely until none are left? It's not like they can swim back to the islands. The whole island knows this issue has nothing to do with the birds. It's about economics. All across the nation, hiding behind environmental pretexts, the government is stealing public land in order to privatize them for profit. What the Park Service plans to do is take a formerly recreational area that was open to the public for free and start to police it and privatize it so they can issue permits and parking passes and, and make a handsome profit off it, just like they have our lighthouse. Our lighthouse used to be free to the public. Now they charge a fee, which goes to the general fund, and they keep the money. It doesn't help the needs of the island. Ocracoke, Hatteras Island, and Nagset have been hit the hardest by this insane, highly irresponsible decision by a questionable federal judge. There's a reason laws come from Congress. Congress represents the people and the people's interests. Congress is elected and can be held responsible for bad decisions. That is why judges don't make laws. They only interpret if you break them. When you let them make laws, they skip the will of the people because judges are not elected and they can act like regional dictators. The will of the people in this area of North Carolina has been completely ignored because a judge has circumvented the lawmaking process by clinging to an, in, an obscure interpretation of one executive order by a president who was impeached. Impeachment. It sounds like a good word to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bobby? 